Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, a solid win there for HQ. They actually even up the head-to-head -head against IG, pull ahead in the actual standings. The head-to-head -head might come into play later in the day when it comes to tiebreakers, but I want to hop into the pick ban because we saw one of those secret strats come out. We saw the Hecarim come out for IG, however, to no avail this time. So I want to I want to get your thoughts, Tabe, on this pick and ban and why specifically they went for Hecarim in this scenario. Uh, I really want to say something about the pick bans because I think uh, IG really did really good at the pick ban phase because I think uh, Lulu really counters Fizz. Uh, I think everyone knows that uh, Westor is really good at Fizz and Assassins and picking Lulu to counter pick all the Assassins is really good. And the second thing is they banned Kench while they are picking two juggernauts to face tank their Kalista. There is really good about pick ban, but we have to know that uh, they also picked Olaf for counter picking Darius, but he uh, performed poorly with getting the first kill, but he also lanes uh, badly against uh, Darius and got solo killed. It is a very bad point. And the second point is, I think Kitty isn't a good giant player because there's two very important mistakes. The first mistake is there's no wards at the left uh, mid lane brush while he put a pink ward in the middle of the mid lane. It is very weird and he got stunned by Elise. And it is I have a lot of question marks on my face. <laughs> and, and the next thing is, uh, I think why you have to initiate as a Janna? You flash W into Kalista with quick silver slash? I have more question marks on my face now. <laughs> well, you brought up the, uh, the, the concept of vision here. And Crumbs, I know we have some thoughts on the way that Vision play, as well as Monte Cristo had some thoughts yeah, about Vision Yeah, I agree with Tabe completely. I thought the draft was awesome for IG. You know, they picked the really solid comp. They have great Siege, you know, good things all around. But I feel like they tunneled Vision so hard in the preparation. In terms of fixing their macro play, just go for, you know what, we're, we're going to beat you with weird composition. We're going to add the Hecarim, spice things up. And the reason why we don't see champions like Hecarim and the four meta junglers right now are Lee Sin, Rek'Sai, Elise, and Gragas, is because all four of those build Sightstone. All four of those also have abilities to face check brushes. The vision game was very poor. Kitty is just is not playing well at all. And because Kakao is on a non sightstone jungler that needs a lot of farm and their macro game is not good, HQ can sit in IG's jungle and just permanently kill them over and over and over. And they have no way to detect whether, whether they are there or not. The only tool they had was the scrying orb from Kit, and he never used it. Even in one fight, he was actually, he could have done it, but it was just awful all over the place. The macro game is just devastated for IG. I don't think they're going to be able to get very far playing like this. Yeah, you're talking about the vision game outside of fights, but inside of fights, they were also very key. The scrying orb came up. It didn't actually come up. It was up. It was available here. They don't have rocket for this fight, and it would have been amazing if he had held on to this rocket. He just fired it middle. Kid was just trying to clear a wave, but what ends up happening here is Rookie, you know, he's running off the left side. He's not backing up Kid. He's not basically reinforcing this jinx. In Westor, you know, you see the reset come through here for Kid. Runs into the brush, he has Scrying Orb! Scrying Orb the brush! You don't have to face check this! And he gets cocooned, and Rookie's on the opposite side of the fight from him, and it just ends up being an absolute disaster. So if they had had more vision available to them, if they had set this fight up properly, and you're talking about their macro game, their micro game, their mechanics, do not seem on point. It's like a trust in your teammates. Just yeah. you, you want to do your thing solo kind of thing. Well, they weren't even doing their own thing. The scrying orb was totally available. Yeah. That's a solo <laughs> play at that point. Now that being said, AHQ played the vision game very well. So from a macro sense, things are looking up for them. Mm -hmm. However, there could be some questions raised about their early play, especially by Mountain, with some very strange movements into the enemy jungle without any kind of support and giving up early kills. I'm still not sold on Mountain because when you banned out the Rek'Sai and the Elise, he resorted to the Rengar, which was overwhelmingly bad. And nobody else seems to want to target him again. We saw how poor he played the early game. Maybe put him on a weaker champion that he will falter even more. So the games that HQ has to play in the purple side, I would be very worried for Mountain getting targeted. And also, Westor is, seems to always pick Fizz no matter what. Yeah, they're very predictable in their pick ban. The Fizz is going to come through, and I thought IG did draft a really good composition to deal with the Fizz, to have the counters with the Janna and the Lulu and the Wave Clear. But you can't really ban out Mountain when you're red side. You really have to ban Gangplank, Mordekaiser, and then they threw Tom Kench in there too. And I also think AHQ, despite everything that went wrong with them 
there, they did go for some comfort here. Ziv did have a carry top lane champion, and he actually got to draft the Darius after he had seen the Olaf. So he was actually able to go into that with comfort, knowing that that was a counter pick for him. Um, and I think uh, what I have to agree with Crumbs, uh, Crumbs brought out a very good point about, uh, I have never think of that because I'm not good at jungling, but Crumbs point is very crucial. Why you have to pick a champion without buying a side stone. Mm -hmm. At the early stage, like Elise is like a silly guy, he's invading the jungle and he failed badly. But, and we can see that Hakram has finished uh, the green, what's the name of Cinder it? Hulk? Uh, the Cinder Hulk. Yes, the, Cinder the, Hulk. The, the, with the fire. Yeah. 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 The Sunfire yeah. Cape Jungler item. <laughs> yeah. And he soloed the dragon with Janna. He's having a, having a huge lead and Elise is doing nothing. But after that, when Elise brought brought out his first side stone, he controls the map, controls all the fission, and we can find that Hakram is not snowballing the jungle phase. Yeah, he takes vision, way too much gold. The vision game was there for HQ, the macro game was there, and they come away with the first win of the day. We need to take a quick break, but the action continues when we return with an EU versus NA clash between Fnatic and Cloud9. We'll take a look at that right after this. AHQ and IG will see who can pull ahead and see whether IG has any more strategies left. It's gonna be a lot of damage to Ty. He wants it, the ult comes down, but it's not enough. Oh, flashes forward, it's, it's the pattern, gonna know what it is! This mountain comes in, the Chum, the Waters is down, but the Monsoon's there. Ahn picks up the first kill as there's the Onslaught of Shadows, not doing too much from Kakao. We're still burning to death the Zap, not gonna find him, Kid! Rockets forward, gets excited, Kid is with the Monsoon, gets on out of there. It's AHQ, they're on the fountain, the Nexus is exposed to Ty all the way even out the matchup here and IG look all over the place.